What's up guys, this is Ferrin of FOTK. Now we're going to look at a different type of tutorial. This is going to be high to low poly baking. So this is going to be creating normal maps for your models uh, a different way instead of using Endu. So right now I've got a character inside uh, ZBrush which I've created for a project at uni. So he's kind of like an athletic guy. Um, if I take off the sub tool I can take off actually uh, yes that's bit more tricky so basically that's what I've got on the outside because obviously you don't need any hidden polygons because obviously the outfit is taken up most of the room so anyway uh, is it worth showing you basically to do a character high to low poly baking you obviously create it in ZBrush and you get up to about well I've got uh, what's this I don't know if that's 352,000 or 2 million polygons uh, just on this one model. It could be 2 million actually I think because um, with the clothes and whatnot as well that sounds about right. So we've got 2 million polygons here and if you t put that into Maya it is going to crash or it's going to be very slow to work with. So first of all what we need to do is we need to decimate this. So I've done it here already but you click on your model you come up to Z plugin, decimation master um, you click pre-process current and then decimate current and then you'll get a, a, a copy um, which is going to be slightly less but maintains the detail and that's just easier for us to put it into Maya so I've got this so um, I can export it so I'll export this as blah 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 but it's fine I've already done it so what you can do is export it as an OBJ sorry and bring it into Maya and you get something like this. So this one's actually 701,000. If you go in close, you can see all the polygons, and it has triangulated it, which I do not like. But anyway, that's not a problem. So this is our high poly. We need to now make a low poly. Now, if you're doing this, obviously in Maya, you're most likely going to have a low poly anyway. Um, but if you're doing it in ZBrush, something like this, and you create a character and you haven't got a low poly, then you're going to have to retopologize this and. I'm just going to do a quick little demo on how to do that inside Maya. Um, otherwise, you can download other, or buy, sorry, uh, other programs called Topo Gun. That's quite familiar. That's quite common for retopologizing. But just using Maya for a second, just you know, because you've, if you, you know, if you're following this tutorial, you might already have Maya. So there's no point going out and buying another program if you just want to test things out. So basically, what we want to do is we want to click on our model come up to this tool here with this little magnet um, and then click on that and basically it's set our model live so what we can now do is we can click quad draw down here in the modeling toolkit and we can just start clicking points all over our model and then once we've got enough we can hold shift and we can turn this into quads and what we're do actually doing is wherever I place a point down it places it on this model so what we can now do really well I will do it really quickly obviously if this is you then you'll have to uh, take a bit more time doing it especially when it comes to facial topology and that's something you'll have to look up and research because that means a lot in terms of animation good topology usually means good animation so that's good to know I mean I'm doing it really roughly here but what I usually do is I usually do one half as long as my character is symmetrical and I make sure that is before I export it out of ZBrush Oops. there we go then what we can do is imagine this is all done you can click the model into um, object mode come into the move tool and then I can probably hide this Oops. if you, if you try click on it it won't do anything it's because you need to un well uncheck this so disable this mark live or make live button so we can hide that and then what we can do is grab these and then actually no sorry what am I thinking of um, I still need that on because when we come to do this we want the points to stay on that area so we select these we can scale them in so they're all lined up together on their X or Z axis whichever one you're working on and I usually hold X oops I hold X it doesn't want to do it now does it hold X I think that's probably because actually I do have that mark live on 
Oh well, I'll take it off anyway. So yeah, I do that. I size it down and then hold X and then snap that to the center. And then what we can do is, as long as your center pivot is in the middle, you can duplicate it. Scale to minus one. Merge that. Bearing in mind, we, we should have a whole half body here. Um, and then you can just merge the verts in the center. Which I will... Oops. Which I will do now. So we've gone from 23 and down to 12. Yeah, and then we can smooth it. And then we've got a high poly mesh. Uh, sorry, a low poly mesh of our high poly. Okay. So that is retopologizing it. So basically... We can't animate the high poly, so we're going to need the low poly to animate for us. But we need all this detail projected onto this. So, I've already got one. Let's load those up then. Let's... Um, da -da 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 -da. So, let's put in the low poly first. And then the file import high poly. Ooh, high poly or decimated one. I'll do decimated just for a um, I hope it's going to do it there we go, do it just purely for tutorial purposes I'm not really want this one to be my final, but anyway what you would need to do, which I haven't actually done is UV the low poly one so we're going to need to quickly shove some UVs on this um, ooh, let's... I'm not going to be too fussed about the whole thing, but I will show you uh, let's do that. Let's pick these out. Let's make sure this whole loop comes out. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically UV the uh, the body, so you can see the the details. I'm not going to bother going through the whole thing. And the reason I haven't actually UV'd this one yet is because I'm actually in the process of still doing this character. So again, just make sure we get all these out. I just want the body. Obviously your character will have hopefully full UVs and then make the most out of the bake. And then we'll come down to about here. Oops. Go to the drag tool. Bring that up to about there. That's alright. And then bring this. Oops. Follow those nice loops around. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. So I will bring my UV editor. I'll hold while having these polygons selected. I'll hold Shift, right click, and then click Plane Arm Map. And then let me just put these onto two screens so you can see. Oops. So we need to look at this checkerboard, and we need to make it look good. So if, easiest way to do it. Oh, I have missed a few polygons there. I will just. Go and add those in again. And then, there we go, plain arm up again. Yeah, that's cool. I grab the loops underneath the arms. Oh, that's not the right one. There we go. And then I'll grab that one as well, because it does the other side. I will cut those UVs. And then, we don't need to worry about that, because we haven't got the loop here. Otherwise, we would cut it in the middle here. So then they flip out. So we can go to shell, grab each one, click on one and then unfold, so polygons unfold, and then we get two bits like this, and we've got a nice checkerboard. But I usually go a step further, right click in, going on to UV, click and drag all of this, go to tool, smooth UV, and then just where it says unfold, just click and drag to the right, and keep doing it until it stops. And then the same for the other. And that just ensures that there's equal space in between each square here, this UV square. And then what we can do is we can grab these, click layout, it pops them in here for us. And then our UVs are done. So we can, again, further export this as an FBX. I prefer FBX to OBJ when I'm working inside X normals. So let's just do low poly. So that's the one with the UVs, and then the high poly as well, so click on that, export selection, that's important, um, high poly, that one doesn't have to have UVs, which is a good thing because you'll be there all day selecting polygons, so 
wait for that to export marvelous so we've got our two um come what I was saying uh, meshes we can open up X, open up X normal sorry and then we can place in our high definition and low definition meshes so I'll just delete the other ones so high poly can drag and drop same with low poly now with bake in normal maps so you come to bake in option and make sure normal na normal map is selected you want whichever size you want so if you're going to work for a 2048 by 2048 texture sheet then you're going to do that and then whichever one you prefer I will do this and I'll just call this normal no it's already going to be called normal um, character just for example it will always have a prefix of underscore normal so you don't need to put that in the title so yeah that's cool and then before we click generate we come to tools and we want ray distance calculator and all that's going to do it's going to calculate the distance of our polygons from our low poly to our high poly so it knows how to project the detail onto it you know what bits are coming out what you know what bits are come, how do I explain it are coming out of the body what bits are going in on the body and what distance of each vertex will be needed you know if that makes sense uh, it's just calculating how to create the normal map in terms of depth so click on tools and array distance calculator sorry click on the low poly which you've imported and then click go and then I usually leave this for about 30 seconds I mean it's obviously it's trying to conform at the minute because it's got a large high definition mesh so it's just reading it at the minute and then it would start counting there we go so generating computing and then here we go and then what I do is I usually just leave this so where it says compute in five seconds I usually wait to that to get to about 30 before I click stop uh, you mean you can leave it for about a minute if you want but you don't need to wait ages and ages for this however if you do do this come out and then you put your normal map in and it's not the same you know or it just doesn't look right it might be worth just giving it a bit more time um, so 30 seconds will do for me so there we go I can stop and then copy results and then that says copied the values and that's the, the distance between both of those and then if you actually come to your low definition mesh it says maximum and the minimum distance that's what we've just calculated using the two meshes and that's important for our normal map so we can come to bacon up oh well, just click generate maps and then they will bake now normal maps don't usually take that long to bake ambient occlusion maps take forever sometimes you know you can wait five minutes for a nice normal map you can wait f half an hour for a good ambient occlusion map depending on what it is so it's just conforming again because of the high poly but there we go and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause it now and I'm going to come back once it's finished alright there we go so it's done so we can clearly see that this is the detail that we wanted we wanted that athletic outfit projected onto him um, we've got a few areas sort of at the bottom here and then at the top here but that's fine we can always clean those up after you're always gonna have to clean up at some point you know you're never gonna get a perfect normal map and if you do you're lucky so close that down we got that on the desktop now we can come into Maya and then what we can do now is just hide the high poly one because we don't need that we can delete it but I just want to hide it just in case click on our low poly one and we can go to the attribute editor I think I've already got materials selected uh, I prefer a blin and you'll see why in a sec so create new material blin just because it holds the specular and then we can go to bump mapping click this check box and then we want file and then use as we want tangent space normals so click that and then where it says bump value click this and then load in our normal map and then we can turn on the check uh, the texture button up here and as you can see it looks horrible it's like what? what why is it like that but we can still see the normal details but I usually like to come up to the renderer and go legacy high quality viewport that way we can clearly see our normal map now you're gonna have to forget these sharp lines here this is the cutoff point for my UVs yeah so you know those kind of don't there's no material existing on these areas just yet 
But if we actually just focus on this area where the uh, normal map is, it looks high poly. But it's not. It's high poly. And that normal map is working brilliant. So if you actually look around, the specular helps us see the depth of each crease and crevice of this normal map. That's why I like the blin. Yeah? So if you come down this here uh, come down on here as well, you can see the creases here are working well. Just minus that sharp line here. And it's good because your reflections and that will interact with your normal map, which will give you more realism as well. So there we go guys. That is how you can get a high poly mesh and a low poly mesh to integrate together to form something like this. A character or model that is ready to be animated or rendered or anything like that. If you want to use, you know, create a character in ZBrush, you're going to have to do this process if you want to use it in another program. And it might be useful just to know. I mean, I'm no character artist, but if you put a bit of time in, I mean, this is what I came up with. I'm not a character guy, but I managed to get it done just by looking at references, you know, looking at other, like, I don't know, pictures of t-shirts to see where the creases are, and just testing, seeing how you actually create creases. And I'm going to go on to that in probably the next tutorial about like creating clothing and that inside ZBrush and Maya. So if you do have characters, um, then you can add clothes to them. So yeah, I hope you like this tutorial, guys. I hope this is sort of a result you was kind of looking for, and hopefully you'll be able to get the same result on your models. So please like and comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.